Internet connection is the most basic configuration setting needed for a device to access the web or different activities. But how exactly do we connect our system to the internet? This is done by accessing the DHCP network protocol. Hi guys and welcome to yet another interesting video by Simply Learn. But before we begin, if you love watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon never to miss an update from us. Let's take a look at today's agenda. Firstly, we'll understand what exactly the DHCP protocol is. Then the allocation methods in DHCP protocol. Next, we will understand some helpful DHCP settings. And lastly, stepwise, we'll understand the operation model for DHCP. Let's understand the DHCP protocol. The dynamic host protocol or DHCP is a protocol that is designed to assign the IP address to a device for it to access the internet. This network model is based on the client server architecture and removes the process of manually assigning an IP address to the system. Now let's take a look at the allocation methods for the DHCP protocol. The allocation method of DHCP is divided into two types. The first type is the manual allocation, which as the name suggests is the assigning of IP address to the system manually by the user. The second method is dynamic allocation which uses a client server architecture to assign an IP address to the system. Now let's see some points regarding the allocation method. The first type is the manual allocation. As mentioned, in this allocation type, the user manually assigns the IP address to the system for accessing the internet and can be observed in this instance. This is done by accessing the network configuration setting of the device and also requires other related configuration such as subnet mask, preferred DNS server, and default gateway. Let's now take a look at the dynamic allocation. In this allocation method, the client device receives all the relevant network configurations from the DHCP server, and the system gets configured to access the internet. The provided IP address is given for a certain period, which is also termed as the lease. Now that we somewhat understand what exactly the dynamic allocation in DHCP server is, let's take a look at a small example. Open the start menu and type command prompt. When the windows open up, type ip config slash all command. As we see, by this command we can take a look at the network settings for our system. Over here we can see the DHCP is enabled. That means the configuration that has been used on the system refers to the DHCP server. And on the bottom side we can take a look at the different network settings that are given along with the IP address by the DHCP server. That is subnet mask, default gateway and the DNS server. Now let's continue with the video. Now let's take a look at some of the notable DHCP settings. The first one is known as scope. As the name suggests, a scope refers to a range of addresses that are available to a DHCP server for allocation of the client device. Next we have is lease. This setting of the DHCP server is designed to prevent the hoarding of IP addresses by a single device. This is done by assigning an expiration date to the leased IP address so that the DHCP server has some minimum addresses left for the client device. And lastly, we have address reservation. In this DHCP setting, the client device requests the server to assign the same IP address to the device each time the address allocation takes place. This is done by identifying the MAC address of the client device. Now let's take a look at the operation model for DHCP protocol. The DHCP operations are performed under user datagram protocol, in short UDP, which is applied on two ports under UDP, which are ports 67 and 68. The first phase is where the client broadcasts a DHCP server message over the network to connect with the DHCP server. This message basically means that it wants to connect to the internet through the DHCP server. 
The second phase is when the DHCP server receives the DHCP message. According to the message, the DHCP server reserves an IP address for the client and network configuration information including subnet mask, default gateway and preferred DNS server. In the third phase, the client responds to the DHCP server's offer through a DHCP request message requesting the offered IP address and relevant network configuration for the system. Then in the last phase, the server acknowledges the request broadcast from the client and sends the DHCP packet to the DHCP client, which is comprised of network configuration for the client device. With this, we have reached the end of the video. If you have any questions regarding the topic, you can ask them in the comment section. Thank you. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.